These people are still desperate for heaters up there. Let me tell you this before I get into the message. We went up to that little place today, uh, the other day, Thursday, up in Burnsville. Walked into a three-pole cir- three circus tent. And um, when we drove up there, <clears throat> Kim had set this, this, uh, this appointment up for us to deliver a half a trailer load, a half a trailer load of food and supplies to them. When we walked into that thing, um, my feet sunk up that deep in the mud. It was snowing like crazy, and it had been raining and stuff up there. And they had laid plastic down everywhere. And when you, when you walked in there, your feet sunk up in the mud into that plastic. And you had to be careful because you'd trip. And as, they, as we drove up, they shook our hands, and her hands was ice cold. Her name is Deborah. Her hands were ice cold. And um, when we drove up there, and I said, good night. And she had one heater inside that tent. It was very cold that day. It was already snowing, and the wind was blowing. Y'all know how that wind was blowing here. It was even worse up there. And I walked into that tent. That tent was pretty much empty. There was a few things over here, just a few things. They had a big old tub where they were washing dishes in, where they're feeding people. Um, And a couple cook stoves, a couple uh, grills over here. They're cooking stuff. And I had a pot of soup on. And as I walked in, and my feet began to sink up in that mud... And they were so happy. They weren't complaining. They were jumping up and down. My daughter can tell you she pulled out, she pulled out of the trailer a case and a half of ketchup and put in there. And when she brought the ketchup in, this woman literally began to do this. Hallelujah, praise God. I mean, she was excited about getting ketchup because they and began to weep and cry because they didn't have ketchup to take to the SAR teams out there, the search and recovery teams way out in the hills and the hollers. And this woman, her name is Deborah, has an old man and an old woman in their 80s. She calls mom and daddy. She, they're not her mom and daddy, but she calls them out, and they're living in a tent right there beside that with a generator with lights and a heater to help her, to try to help her. The old man takes his monthly Social Security check and gives almost all of it to her to buy supplies when they run out of supplies. And as I walked through and my feet began to sink up in that mud and I seen how happy they were, I walked out of there and I went to the bathroom over here so nobody could see me and I began to weep and cry. And I said, God, first of all, I want to say thank you. But secondly, I want to say I'm sorry because, God, I've got a little bit weary in well-doing. And, Lord, I've even second-guessed myself thinking, why are we even doing this? And then, Lord, I drive up here and I see people that are just happy, 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 waiting around in mud and cold and ice cold and don't have anything and just trusting you. And I said, God, I need you to forgive me for my attitude and I need you to help me. And after I got myself pulled back together and, and uh, I come in and begin to, we begin to unload stuff and over and over, some of you that were with us that helped us unload stuff, you've seen, we would stop and cry a little bit and we'd rejoice a little it would cry a little bit and uh, so we unloaded a half a trailer load of stuff and then we loaded up to go down to another place to unload the rest of it and we got there and we found the exact opposite they had a little gate there they wouldn't even let us come through they stopped us there and they said what are y'all here for and I said we've got an appointment to drop a bunch of stuff off and told her who it was that made the appointment and they said no she said she's not part of us we're not part of her we don't want any of your stuff. I said, you got to be kidding me. We got food and we got heaters and we got fuel. I said, we got 125 gallons of heater and five gallon bu- uh, containers back here. I said, surely. And he said, no. I said, you don't want to even look in our trailer. And he said, no. I said, well, that's all right. I said, because we're getting ready to make somebody really, really happy. Amen. We turned that thing around and went back eight miles back down the road and we pulled up. And when, when Deborah saw us coming in, she started hollering and screaming and jumping up and down and hugged us and started crying again. I said, this is going to be a good day for you, Deborah, amen, because you're getting everything. You're getting all of it, amen. And we rejoiced and praised the Lord and cried together. The next day, me and my dad went back up there Friday and took two generators to them, and we watched an old man, 85 years old, Leaned over that generator when I told him, I said, this isn't to give away to anybody else. This is for you and your wife because I don't want you to have any problems. The generator they had had gas all over the top bubbling up and it was messed up and it was a danger. And I, I said, this is yours. And we seen that old man lean over that generator and begin to cry. 
and weep and tears drop on that cardboard box. And Deborah said, he don't never cry, but he's crying today because of joy. You say, well, preacher, I thought everything was about over. No, there's a lot of hurting people up there. There's a lot of needs, a lot of desperation. I said, this other generator, you give it to whoever you want to. I said, but this is yours. And uh, he hugged uh, Deborah and began to hug us and hug my daddy. Now, this woman here, she came out of drugs and she came out of drunkenness. She gave her, te her testimony and she told us. She told us, I mean, just, just started, I mean, started just letting us have it. I mean, we were already done unloading stuff Thursday and she just started telling us what God done. And she, I mean, she got on with it, telling us what all God had done, where she had been and what, what all she'd been through. And if you look at this girl, you would, this lady, she's a lady, if you looked at her, you would misjudge her in a heartbeat. But I'm telling you, she's got God in her heart, and she's got a heart as big as the truck. And this woman said this. She said, I got to the bottom of the barrel. She said, I was a drunk, and I was a druggie. And she said, I'd been an AA. And she said, the guy running AA got cancer and had to leave, and I had to finish the classes for him. She said, but I got to the bottom of the barrel. And she said, it was me, God, and the devil. And God said, here's your choice. And she said, now look, I've got a nonprofit organization, 501c3. It's called Help a Vet. And she's helping vets all across our country. She goes and takes that tent, her mama and daddy, who aren't even her mama and daddy, takes them with her and sets up that tent and tries to feed vets all across this country. Some of them are homeless. Some of them are hurting. Some of them are going through problems. But she, does. But she said, right now, I'm doing hurricane relief. And she said, I'm proof that God can take nothing and use it for, to help other people. And I said, hallelujah for that. Isn't it amazing how God, and I was telling our group when we left, I said, God always takes people that nobody else would ever, ever suspect. He always takes those most unlikely, like he did David as a little shepherd boy and makes him a king. He always majors in taking mess-ups and making masterpieces out of them. And that's what he's done in her life. My dad and I went up there the next day. It was Friday, and there was four inches of snow up there. And I walked in. I said, where's Deborah? And they said, she's in the back with a broom trying to pull the snow off the tent. She's afraid it's going to collapse. We went up there, and she's up on a ladder about this tall up there. And it's leaned over, and she's got a big broom, and she's pulling stuff over. I said, you're too old to be doing something like this. And she said, somebody's got to do it. Amen. But she's full of love, and she's full of compassion. I just said that to say this. Fingerprints of God isn't just here. It's all through the western North Carolina mountains. We're seeing it all over people. We're seeing it all over, not just the western North Carolina mountains. We're seeing it all over uh, the nation with good people coming together to help. So take your Bibles if you will.